And thou will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yay. I mean, now that's the good news for today. That, for me, is one of the great punchlines in Scripture. But these days, it strikes me not so much as a parable with a gotcha, but it seems to be a very apt description for how many of us are feeling. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed these days. How about you? Although the presidential election has been called, there is still so much angst surrounding that. And that in and of itself would be more than enough in any given year, but this is not any given year. COVID rates, as you know, are now at an all time high. And every health official's worst nightmares are coming true. We celebrate Thanksgiving in less than two weeks, but, but how? How do we do that? I know that having turkey alongside with face masks is not very appealing. In my own family, we're beginning to move to the hard decision of not to bring together multiple households. As I told my sisters, I would rather be sad about that than sad because we didn't take precautions and we were gathering instead of working. Beloved, I know, I know, we are bone tired of all the turmoil in our lives. Just bone tired. We want our lives back. We want normalcy. We want the Masters to be playing in April and not in November when the players have to rush to finish before the sun sets. Have you been following the tournament? It's been wild. As a follower of Jesus, as followers of Jesus, we are people of hope. I'm a person of hope. Even if I get cranky from time to time, I am still a person of hope. And you all hope I will not get cranky from time to time. During this misbegotten season, I keep going back to St. Paul's letter to the Romans, even if it is not the assigned scripture for the day. I go back to the church in Rome because I want to learn from a church that was facing absolutely crushing challenges. You have to keep in mind and the persecution of the Christians was just beginning to take shape. And following Jesus literally, literally meant putting your life on the line. So what in the world, what in the world did Paul have to offer this church? Hope. Hope. Paul wrote, we boast in our hope of suffering. Of, no, sorry, we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given us. Paul does not say we won't experience suffering. We will. We will. To dig deeper on this thesis, much deeper, I went to one of my go-to works of theology. See if this sounds familiar. Why is pain kindness? Anyone who says differently is selling something. Two points for anybody who gets the reference. Yes. Princess Bride. Yay! Wesley in The Princess Bride, one of the great theological movies of all time. Seriously. It has been my experience that the hardest thing to face is the unknown. Once you know what you are facing, you can deal with it. Or at least deal with it better. And that's why this year has been so hard for us. There are just too many unknowns. 
not just one, not just two, but my word of the day, plethora. I heard a plethora of unknowns. But that is why, beloved, we keep coming back to Jesus, who isn't selling anything except the free love of God and God's amazing grace. This is the same Jesus who promises to walk with us through the valley of the shadow. That's a promise. When you find yourself weeping and wailing and gnashing your teeth, I want you to claim this image. I want you to claim the image of Jesus taking your hand and saying, I've got you. I've got you. We can walk through this together. It doesn't mean that bad things won't happen. It does mean that you have a guide in God that's bigger than yourself. Do you remember when you were a small child? Think back to that. Maybe, maybe you were afraid of thunderstorms. Maybe that's what scared you in the night. The lightning would flash and the thunder would roar and each succeeding boom brought the storm closer and closer to you. So you ran to your parents, ran to your parents, who took you in their arms and held you until the storm passed. And your parents couldn't stop the storm, but they could hold you through the storm. There's a lovely story that Rob Bell tells being out in the woods with his toddler, Trace. Trace is in a backpack. And they are walking through the woods when a storm suddenly comes up and they are caught out in the open. They are getting drenched. And Trace just lets loose with cries of absolute terror. Crying in terror. Look through the Psalms and you'll see that a lot crying in terror. But Bell reminds us that over and over again in the Psalms, God says, when you cry out to me, I will listen. God says, I cannot ignore the cry of somebody that's afflicted. God even says, and listen to this, God even says that when you cry, God is close to the broken heart. Bell says that God is close to those for whom they are lost, scared, soaking wet and afraid. Y'all, we do not need to have it all together to have a close relationship with God. Preachers who tell you otherwise really are just selling something. Because scripture tells a different story. Scripture says this of Jesus, our Lord who says, Come to me, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will refresh you. A couple of days ago, I had some young men working on my house. They were part of 143 Ministries and their handyman service called His Hands. And while they were taking care of a plethora of things for me, we began to talk. Of course, it came out almost immediately that I was an Episcopal priest. I had to fess up. And one of the guys working looked at me and said, really? I used to go to the Episcopal Church. But all I learned about was what not to do and how bad I was. All I learned was when to sit, when to stand, and when to kneel, and it made me so feel so bad I left. I left. And I told him, if I were in his shoes, I would have done the same thing. There wasn't much time to correct a lifetime of bad teaching, but I did get to share with him that that is not the Jesus I know, and that certainly isn't the Jesus that I teach and preach. The Jesus that we know here is the one who knows that all of us, all of us right now, are living on the edge of a razor, and we're gnashing our teeth to keep from screaming. And the Jesus that we know, and the Jesus that we are privileged to share, 
is the one who says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will refresh you. And I hope a seed was planted. I hope a seed was planted. I hope someday this young man gets to hear the words that Rob Bell whispered to his son. And to tell you what he said, I have to go back to Bell's story. Remember, Bell and his toddler in the woods, his son Trace has been in the backpack when the storm reaches its peak, and so does Trace's shrieking. Any of you parents know what it's like to have a child shrieking? Raise your hands. Not everybody raised your hands. Raise your hands. Thank you. Tell the truth. So with Trace absolutely shrieking, Bell takes him out of the backpack, and he tucks him inside his coat. And he holds him close to his chest, and he holds him up so tightly against his heart. And then Belle whispers to Trace over and over and over again, I love you, buddy. We're gonna make it. Dad knows the way home. We're gonna make it. I love you, buddy. And over and over again. Through the storm, Bell says, I carry him home, clutching him tightly against my chest. Bell says, don't you know it is God's privilege and pleasure to hold you against God's chest? Don't you know that yet? I pray you do. I pray you do. Because I pray that I can do no better than to leave you with Bell's benediction to us all. Beloved, now may you, when you are soaking wet, lost, hurting, and confused, may you cry out, and may the creator of the universe take you out of your pack, and may he hold you tight against his chest. May he wrap his eternal loving arms around you, and may you hear him whisper in your ear, I love you, buddy. I love you, buddy. We're gonna make it. Dad knows the way home. We're gonna make it. I love you. Beloved, we're